Welcome to Investors Insights, episode number 154. The markets have gone up with oil the past three to four weeks. Anytime storage capacity is above 80%, the price of oil usually tanks. Yeah, but how does that actually impact portfolio? Well, we're probably going to see four interest rate cuts. We're now down to two. And have so many, so it escalates the price harder to buy. Are these gasoline prices going to stick? Or am I starting to see them edge back up? You're listening to Investors Insights with Greg Powell and the Portfolio Strategy Team from Five Plan Partners. Guys, great meeting this morning. Appreciate yep. all the research you did over the weekend. Um, uh, very valuable. Uh, uh, let's let's talk about stock markets and oil prices. Uh, Bobby, in the meeting, you brought up a couple of things. Uh, uh, let let our viewers un- understand what's going on there. Yes, yeah, so we've talked about it before. Uh, last year, our market traded with oil almost every single day. There were only 12 days where our market did not trade mm-hmm. with the price of oil. And the theme is continuing this year as the markets have gone up with oil the past three to four weeks. Right. But we want to make the point that the fundamentals haven't changed. Right. We're still oversupplied. Mm-hmm. But the interesting fact is uh, the storage capacity is at 90%. And anytime storage capacity is above 80%, the price of oil usually tanks. And so the fundamentals don't make sense for oil to keep going up. So we don't think right. it will hold also, the Fed helped out last mm-hmm. week. Uh, the fallen dollar made the oil prices also go up. So right. Yeah, that, that, played key, that, that played a key mm-hmm. role, and our, our viewers need to understand that. Uh, the dollar goes down, oil prices mm-hmm. can go right, up. Right. So now, Trey, uh, you mm-hmm. had some, some rebuttals as well yeah. as some other information in uh, the meeting this morning in regards to that. Talk yeah. about so, it. So that's kind of where the Fed, you know, everyone hears about the Fed, but how does that actually impact the portfolio right. or, or, you know, or investments? And that's where their impact was most felt was on the dollar. So last week on Thursday, the Fed came out, and what they did is they did pretty much what the market expected them to do. They didn't cut rates. They didn't increase quantitative easing. All they did was they didn't raise rates, and they lowered their expectations from four rate hikes this year down to two. Right. And so what that did is that kind of caused the dollar to flatline and, and, and get a little weaker, uh, which, helped, which helped oil prices. The trouble is, is that while they're remaining flat, even if they're while they're still saying they're going to raise rates some, but even if they remain flat in the rest of the world, which we saw a few weeks ago in Japan and Europe, they continue to cut and use quantitative easing. Our dollar will still more likely than not strengthen, just okay. because doing nothing and while the others are doing something kind of has a, ne- has a has a negative impact just on a relative basis. And so that's kind of where the markets I, we feel like. So so we've really got tightening going on. We really we, are, we just don't mm-hmm. see it through our federal reserve. Exactly. And so that's why the markets really didn't shoot through the roof. We, we right. saw oil mm-hmm. go up, but typically when the Fed comes out more dovish or or weaker or weaker, uh, you know, lower rates or, or cutting or not raising rates, the market shoots through the roof. We right. saw it go up, but really wasn't kind of this exuberance you typically see around something like that. Right. So right. I feel like it was mostly priced in and really we're going to see how it goes from here. But it looks like they've really just kind of come in line and said, all right, markets, we'll just, we'll go with what you expect. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all this uh, tension that we had at the first of the year that we're probably going to see four interest mm-hmm. rate cuts, we're now down to two and it could yeah. be less yeah. than that right. as yeah. the year progresses. They've had two meetings, didn't raise rates. So I mean, it's really not that much of a statement to say right. we're going from four to two. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, now, actually, you were talking about uh, the impact of interest rates uh, we we're talking about in, uh, interest rates on the portfolio. Yes. Also, from an economic indicator, uh, you, you, I think we've got a number coming out uh, on, on housing. Bit, on housing, yeah, Talk on housing. That. We've got a housing report today on existing home sales, and the reason we want to highlight that for you is that we've talked about housing and the impact on the American economy. It's a major leg of the stool. Yeah. And when it's always been good, we've had good sales. Now we're in a time, of course, where you've got. A favorable unemployment rate. You've got good consumer confidence. All of that. You should be having more existing home sales. Right. We're not, and we delved in behind that. The reason is we have a supply problem right now with higher sale homes. Sure. You know the lower sale homes have moved a lot. Right. The higher sale homes, you just hadn't had as many, so it escalates the price harder to buy. Right. Well, and, and you're you're talking about new construction. New there. construction. Yeah, that's right. that's not the existing. Home exactly. Right. And what's interesting about it is, to Greg's point, what we see is favorable in that because it's restricted supply is home builders are going to jump back in there now and start building. And that's important because that's a higher multiplier. Right. You know, if you're building a house, it's about three times multiplier in a year because you're hiring people on the mm-hmm. site. You're going to a major retailer to supply it as opposed to when you buy an existing home. It's not much of that. Right. So we could have a nice tailwind this year to help us if these home builders pick up. Sure. You know, the key to all of this, I think, whether it's oil prices, stock market, uh, economy, and even in the, the housing market, has to come down with uh, consumer confidence. Yes, it does. Uh, you know, yeah. you've got baby boomers 
that are wanting to downsize. Mm -hmm. So they got that bigger house they want to downsize out of. Plus, at the same time, it's a tight market for new construction. It is. Uh, that's out there. At you know, same time, uh, again, uh, people having confidence at the pump uh, yeah. to go, you know, hey, yeah. are these gas line, gasoline yeah. prices going to stick? Or am I starting to see them edge back up? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be back up at mm -hmm. $3, 4 mm -hmm. and I'll just hang on to my money and li you know, live my tight budget and not spend as much. So we're kind of at an interesting crossroads here. Yeah, we are, here. yes. Yeah. 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 So on that note, we appreciate you taking time to watch us. We hope you have a great productive week and we'll look forward to keeping you informed and hopefully giving you confidence uh, that we're watching your portfolios and staying on top of it. Thanks again. Look forward to talking to you soon.